1,000 kilometers, five different countries, and six different cities. 21 days, zero euros. My name is Edwards, and in June 2016, I traveled for 21 days with absolutely no money. From Germany to Hungary, here was the challenge, to travel with no money. So I emptied my wallet before leaving home, and I hit the road. And to toughen up the challenge a bit, I committed to not use internet. So I couldn't use websites like Couchsurfing or Helpix that allows you to find accommodation or a host for free. And like this began one of the most incredible experiences I've ever lived. Back home, everybody asked me the same question. How? How did you do that? How did you survive for 21 days with no money? I can't even survive for one day with no money. <laughs> I have to sleep somewhere. I have to eat. How did you do that? Well, here is the secret. When you travel, you basically only have three things to pay. The first thing is transportation, getting from point A to point B. The second thing is food. What are you going to eat? What are you going to drink? And the last thing is accommodation. Where are you going to sleep? And you can make these three things free. And here is how. For transportation, I hitchhiked the old trip. I've been picked up by cars, trucks, vans. Well, that wasn't a van, actually. That was a hearse. So that hearse was transporting a dead from Leipzig to Dresden, and let's just say I had the privilege to be part of the wonderful journey. I even got a ride from a smart car that was driving 150 kilometers an hour on the highway in Germany. I have to say I didn't even know such a small car could drive that fast. <laughs> and I have to say I was a bit scared. For food, I was asking local restaurants for leftovers. So I would just run into a restaurant and say, hey, my name is Edward, I'm 33 years old, I'm from Belgium, and I'm doing a travel experiment. I try to travel with no money. So if you have anything that is not good anymore that you plan to throw, and that you could give it to me, I'd be happy. As expected, most people told me, no, no way. But sometimes I received Right. And I have to say that during three days, that's the only thing I ate, bread and water. But as you can see, I was happy. <laughs> but sometimes, people would cook real meal from scratch for me or give me delicious dishes. This is all I had, Thai, kebabs, pizza, chocolate cake with cappuccino in Leipzig. Gratin Dauphinois in Dresden. That chocolate cake and that macaron at the number one cake shop according to TripAdvisor in Budapest. And that little soup and that fruit juice at the number one restaurant according to TripAdvisor again in Vienna. A quick one about that restaurant. When I wanted to sit down, the waiter even pulled out my chair so that I could sit down. I have to say nobody has ever done that to me before in my life. For accommodation, I was asking random people in the street, hey, can I sleep at your place tonight? <laughs> I am not going to ask you. So as expected, nine out of 10 times people told me no, but I learned something from that. 
And the thing I learned is to redefine my view about rejection. Now, who has ever experienced rejection in his life? Please raise your hands. All right. The people who didn't raise your hands, you are liars. <laughs> so we all experience rejections in our daily life. The thing is, most of us experience rejection once a day, once a month. We are not so used to it. That's why it hurts so much. We go to a job interview. We don't get the job. We get rejected. We go talk to that pretty girl in the bar. We get rejected. And that hurts. But there are two things I'd like to share with you about rejection. And that comes from a guy who has experienced an average of 20 rejections a day for 21 days between the rejections I faced when I was hitchhiking, asking for food, or accommodation. The first thing about rejection is that people are never rejecting you. People are rejecting the idea you represent. So never take it personally. When you are hitchhiking, for example, who has ever hitchhiked in his life? All right, not so many people. Come on, guys. <laughs> when you are hitchhiking, the vast majority of people who won't take you hitchhiking won't do that simply because it's in their identity. That's who they are. They don't take hitchhikers. End of the story. Don't take it personally. You are not the problem. And the second thing about rejection is that Rejection does not mean you'll have nothing at all. Rejection just means you'll have something a little bit different. When I was asking random people in the street, hey, can I sleep at your place tonight? And people told me no, I wasn't telling myself, all right, that means I'm going to have to sleep outside tonight. No, I was telling myself, all right, that means I'm going to find somebody else and live another experience that might be even better than the one I just missed. We should not be afraid of rejection. It is just part of life. And to me, getting what you want in life is just a matter of being willing to experience enough rejections before having what you actually want. And in the end, I didn't sleep a single night outside. It did happen that at 4 a.m. I was still in the streets asking myself, why am I going to sleep tonight? But I always found somebody. That's me. <laughs> All right, what are the lessons that I've learned from doing this? I already shared some of them with you, but I'd like to share now the four biggest ones I've learned during this trip. And I believe these are lessons we can all apply in our daily lives, because in the end, Life is a journey, too. The first thing I've learned is that this is not about what you get. This is about what you give. I began this journey wondering each time I was meeting someone new, what can I get from this person? Can I get food, a ride, accommodation? And I ended up this journey asking myself completely different questions. Questions like, what can I give to this person? Can I give a smile, my enthusiasm, an inspiring story to share, an ear to, an ear to listen to problems, sing a song, dance with them, anything? And switching these questions from the getting to the giving completely changed my journey. And I have to say that I lived the best moments of my journey when I was in the giving mindset and not in the getting mindset. But to give, you have to meet people. And that's the second thing I've learned. Drop the fear to approach people, and the world can be an amazing place. Traveling with no money forces you to constantly meet new people because your survival depends on them. Sometimes in our daily lives, we even struggle to ask for a way when we are lost. It is just so easy to take our smartphones and ask Google Maps. This journey taught me to drop my fear of the other. And I have learned that you don't need a good reason to start a conversation. You don't need to be in the same sports club. You don't need to be in the same university or introduced by a common friend. 
dare to say hello to a stranger, dare to just run in a bar and ask the first stranger, hey, I just met you, this is crazy. <laughs> now, dare to say, hey, I thought you were cool, my name is Edward. Don't say your name is Edward unless your name is Edward. <laughs> but dare to say it. So this guy and his friends, they were carrying a couch around Vienna. At each famous stop, seven of them, they had to drop the couch, lay on the couch, and enjoy life. <laughs> when I saw them, I had to introduce myself. So I just told them, you guys are amazing. And they looked at me, and they told me, you want to come with us? And this is how I ended up spending an whole afternoon with two guys from Vienna just carrying a couch around Vienna. <laughs> the, third, the third thing I've learned is that sometimes not having the choice is the best option you can have. When you travel with money, you can basically pick anything you want. The yacht hostel where you're going to stay at, the food you're going to eat, the transportation you're going to take. But when you decide to travel with no money, you don't have that luxury of choice anymore. So when someone gives you something, you have to accept it. So for example, when you are hitchhiking and a car stops, the car looks a bit dirty, the driver doesn't seem to speak any languages you are speaking, you can't just say, yeah, thank you, but I'll just wait for another car. <laughs> you can't say that because the guy gave you a chance, so you have to give him a chance. And this is how I ended up spending two hours in the truck of a Ukrainian truck driver that didn't speak any single language I was speaking. During two hours, he kept telling me stories in Ukrainian. <laughs> I don't speak Ukrainian. And I had every 10 minutes to reply him with a broad smile on my face. You get that I don't understand a single word of what you're saying, don't you? But you know what? That was one of the most interesting and funniest story of the journey. Because you see, I am not so sure that I would have met this guy in a bar in my hometown in Brussels. I would have spent two hours talking with him, especially not in Ukrainian. But there, 1,000 kilometers away from home with no money, I had no choice. And sometimes not having the choice is the best option you can have. And the last thing I've learned is that there are no such things as bad experiences. To me, there are only experiences that lead you to better things. But I believe deep down that we should never regret anything because the bad things that happen to us make us grow and ultimately lead us to better things. I think it was the second night of my trip. I was in Leipzig, Eastern Germany. And I began asking random people in the street, hey, can I sleep at your place tonight? At 8 p.m. Four hours later and 20 rejections later, I found myself midnight, complete darkness in Leipzig with still nobody to host me. And I began asking myself questions. Questions like, why am I doing this? Why am I putting myself in such conditions? where I experienced so many rejections, so much pain. But then I met these four German girls. And they looked at me and they told me, you can sleep at all place. I was so happy. But then they looked at me and they told me, but first, we go to a nightclub. And you are coming with us. That was in heaven. And at some point of the night, one of them asked me, Edward, What's the worst thing about traveling the way you do? And I thought about it, and I replied, you know, nothing. Because you see, tonight I experienced more than 20 rejections. And during four hours, I felt really bad. But all these little rejections and bad st stuff, bad moments, led me at the right time, at the right place, to meet you. And going to a nightclub with you is not something I'm going to forget for a very long time, so I don't regret anything. 
And that's basically the story of my journey. How all these little rejections and bad moments led me to meet the people who made my journey. And to live moments I will remember as long as I live. As a closing, am I trying to sell you something? Am I suggesting that you should just leave your wallet and all your money at home and start traveling the way I did? Of course not. If it's not your thing, don't do it. But all I want to say is, they're a bit more. A little bit of courage can change your life. It certainly ch changed mine. Ask yourself the question, what would I do if I were fearless? Go talk to that stranger. Dare to face rejection. Pursue your dream, go on an adventure. Because in the end, like Ellen Carroll once said, life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all. Thank you very much.